which is typically too young for those animals to survive on their own, seeing that they will spend it learning what it's like to be a baby dolphin. Here at the aquarium, we do not make those rules. We do not set that criteria. That's done for us by National Marine Fisheries. It is done by NOAA and Florida Fish and Wildlife. We're all part of a very large straining network. And those decisions are made from above us. They let us know which animals can be released, where they're going to go for rehab. All those determinations are made by someone else. Now, Nicholas was deemed unreleasable. We were allowed to keep him here at the Clearwater Marine Aquarium. And that's when the training starts um, with all the animals. Once they've been deemed unreleasable, we start to spend lots of time with them. We want them to participate with us um, in their care. So we start training. We use positive reinforcement um, to work with all of them. What do you guys think dolphins find reinforcing? What are the girls carrying around? Fish. Fish is how we can punctuate when they've done some of the correct behavior. We also give them toys. We give them lots of attention. You guys can help us so well by clapping and cheering. Whenever you hear the whistle blow, you know Nicholas has done the correct behavior. More importantly, he's known he's done the correct behavior. And then we can celebrate and give him that positive reinforcement. Now what the girls are doing right here with Nicholas is a husbandry behavior. It is uh, a medical management, and this is the way that we take measurements uh, from all of our dolphins. We start at the tip of their chin, and then we go all the way. There's a notch in the middle of the tail. Looks great job. <laughs> He's very excited about his measurements. <laughs> He's like, and we want, him to be, we want him to participate uh, readily with these um, behaviors. And why would this be important to know how long Nicholas is? This is another really cute one, or a very important one. We do it twice. Another type of measurement that we'll take with him is his girth. Now length, just like us, once we reach our adult height, we're not going to get any taller. We may shrink sometimes, but we can grow wide, right? Or skinny. <laughs> show off. I told you, he's like, I scored on that one. That was even better than the first one. Yeah. So why would it be important to know how wide Nicholas is? Well, he's going to be with us for probably, hopefully, the average lifespan is 25 years, but I've worked dolphins that are currently in their 50s. So their weights can fluctuate just like their midlines can fluctuate. We really want to maintain a healthy weight and size for Nicholas. So knowing what his um, actual measurements are important to determine what's a healthy weight for Nicholas. Another way that we can determine that is right behind me is a very large bathroom scale and every week he readily and happily slides up onto that scale <laughs> and allows us to take his weight just like Winter, just like Hope, just like the Pelicans, and just like Wally the Otter. All the animals are weighed weekly and we're able to monitor their growth and maintain a healthy body weight for them. So husbandry behaviors are important. They allow us to collect blood samples, fecal samples, anything proactively that we can do to maintain their health, it's important. But another thing is important for them to learn and participate in daily, and those are cognitive behaviors. Those are mental challenges that we provide all the animals here. If Nicholas were out in his natural environment, he would be problem solving. He'd be working out his daily routine. We have to be able to provide that sort of stimulus to the animals here. So we challenge them with learning new behaviors, or what Kaylee's about to ask him is called wait and go. Now the key to this is, she's going to ask him to wait, she's going to give him a hand signal, and then he does it. Woo! The key to this is usually when we ask a behavior, they emit it or they'll do that behavior right away. We're asking him to wait until he's offered that signal to actually go and do it. You can cheer for him. He's learning this. So we're using behaviors that are sort of simple for him to do. We can add <coughs> complex behaviors <laughs> to this. And then eventually we're going to start pairing or shaping and chaining other behaviors too. So there'll be a long line and he has to remember each behavior in that order before he's able to do it. So Kayla, if you do one more, I can explain to everyone what he's supposed to be doing. So she's going to ask him to wait when he looks at her. So wait. 
Splash. Now I'll splash. Did you guys hear the whistle? Nope. No. <laughs> he did not splash. So wait. Vocal. Go. Good job, buddy. You did it. So cute. So she just asked him to splash. A splash or a wait, a splash and go. And he's got spin on the brain. <laughs> Baby, no. That's what I asked you to do. Ooh. Hi, Cord. So what she's doing is she's prompting him to do that splash behavior real time. Wait. Splash, Nick. Go. <laughs> no, I don't want to. And typically you'll ask maybe two, maybe three times, and then you simply move on because there's some communication. Either we're not communicating properly with him or he, he just has something stuck in his brain. So did Kaylee respond any differently? She was neutral. Could you see his reaction? He knew he didn't get it right because he didn't do his celebration. So the way we communicate an incorrect response is by doing nothing. We don't send him to his room. We won't take away his shell phone. Okay, good. You guys are still listening. But we just move on. Um, we'll come back and we, we may revisit it later. We may try to give him other sort of help to, to work him through that. But we don't want to frustrate him if he's got something. We're not going to win that argument with him. So we're just going to move on. Now the third and final type of behaviors that we're going to demonstrate for you go sort of hand in hand with his weight measurements. Those are exercise behaviors. Um, it is important that we provide an opportunity for them to get their hearts pumping, to get their bodies moving, and this enables us also um, to maintain his healthy body weight. So the powerhouse of the dolphin is their peduncle, which is their tail, and their tail flukes. He's going to show you guys his muscles. He's flexing. He said the beach Woo! is that way. Good job. But that is the powerhouse of the dolphin. So getting him to use those muscles. Oh. Woo! Woo! <laughs> <laughs> getting him Nick. to hey. use those muscles are important. Now the reason we all panicked right there, you guys may have seen it. He came really close to that wall, didn't he? Yeah. Dolphins are not the um, unicorns of the sea. Sometimes oh. they're very clumsy. Bad. And they like to scare God. us. God. He probably knew where he was. Yeah. <laughs> Your turn. <laughs> he is not taking that bridge when he should. So he should That's stop my that behavior immediately. Yeah. Bridget. <laughs> So exercise is important. My heart's pumping. <laughs> Probably because I'm just scared. <laughs> because in this industry, you break it, you buy it, right? Yeah. We're not buying a dolphin today. No. Not trying to break one. No. <laughs> so his exercise uh, list or repertoire of things that he does. <laughs> it's very extensive, and he, out of all of our animals here, seems to enjoy his exercise the most. That includes the training staff. Um, he does get really fired up about um, doing these high-energy behaviors. And we hope you guys have enjoyed learning about Nicholas today. Um, we do want to... <laughs> Nicholas and his friends here at the aquarium have all been rescued, rehabilitated. Um, they cannot be released due to their straining situation. And they've all been um, worked with. We have very strong relationships with all of them. Uh, because of this, it allows us to get up close and personal with them on a daily basis. Um, if you were to try this at home with his wild counterparts, you will not have the same experience. And we highly discourage you from trying to interact with his friends out there for a couple reasons. Um, one, it's very dangerous for you. 
Um, these are large, powerful animals, and you do not want to get involved when they're out there trying to hunt, or it's mating season, or when there's babies involved. It's just not really safe. Yeah. But when we do try to feed with them, or feed them, swim with them, and touch them, it disrupts their natural behavior, and it jeopardizes their survival. And for that reason, dolphins and manatees and all marine mammals are protected by the 1972 Marine Mammal Protection Act, which makes those types of activities illegal for us. Um, so if you ever want a chance to meet an animal, we encourage you to try this in an environment like ours, where it's safe uh, for them and safe for you as well. Now again, we would like to thank all of you for spending your day here with us. Um, we do have one nice way to say goodbye to all of you. Um, it does involve some splashing, so this will be your splash warning. <laughs> we have people running for the hills already. Yep. <laughs> Bye, you guys. Bye. So, again, thank you guys so much for spending your day here with us today. I would also like to remind you guys that we do have members from our stranding and rescue team. Can you girls wave? Yeah. Spread out. Don't clump. And welcome your guests. They're going to be available, too, for any questions that you guys may have about um, what our team does here at the aquarium. They have a great job. Um, so please feel free to ask them a lot of questions. So on behalf of myself and, of course, all of our residents, we'd like to say thank you and enjoy the rest of your day here at the Clearwater Marine Aquarium. Thank you, guys. Thank you.